Hi students and welcome to today's live IELTS class. My name is Adrian. I'm streaming to you from beautiful Victoria here in Western Canada. I hope that all of you have had a great week and you're looking forward to a fantastic weekend or your weekend is off to a fantastic start. Everybody, this is a subscribers chat class. We have over 2 million subscribers on our YouTube channel. Hopefully you will be one of them uh, and the subscribers can join the chat. So it's a good idea to subscribe, get our schedules, know when these live classes are happening. Welcome Fuang, Babita, Silviana, nice to see our, uh, our moderators, both Carolina and Sarah in the class. Thank you for joining and helping. Hi, Andrew. Alpama, it's good to have all of you here with me today. Uh, we are looking at an IELTS listening um, section in this class. We're going to listen uh, to a part one uh, conversation where a man registers for a football match and a part two um, discussion or lecture about the uh, famous uh, ship, the Titanic. Uh, this lesson and the audio materials for this lesson are going to come from aehelp.com. For academic IELTS, visit us there. For general IELTS, check us out at gieltshelp.com. These are our websites. These are what we use for these live classes. This is aehelp.com here. You can click this big red button to get access to our premium IELTS package. Again, it's just up there. You click it. It's a one-time payment. It doesn't cost you much money. And then you have all of the textbooks, materials, videos uh, that accompany these live sessions so you can learn effectively. We're IDP affiliates, we're British Council uh, partners, we're an IELTS test registration center. That means if you see that red uh, IELTS uh, register for my exam button um, in your My Student account, you can register for your IELTS test through us. Uh, for the general IELTS, yes, we have it. It's gieltshelp.com. Click that big red button. It's the green background. Um, and again, it's a one-time payment for lifetime access. Uh, use the code SKILL9. This is coming from our most recent uh, video release, uh, SKILL9. You can get a 10% discount for that and it will be applied during your checkout. You can pay with PayPal or Google Pay as well. Uh, those are actually a little bit lower down there, yeah. So you've got uh, Google Pay and PayPal op options for you as well as credit cards. So there's just lots of ways to get going and to get the help you need for your IELTS test. Um, students, uh, the apps in your app stores are Academic IELTS Help, General IELTS Help. You can link the app to your web account. You can also purchase through the app. It's a little bit of a different purchase process. Apps are funny that way. Uh, Instagram, IELTS underscore AE Help and G IELTS Help. Uh, emails, if you want to ask me a question. Adrian at aehelp.com or admin at aehelp.com. Babita, good luck on your exam tomorrow. Thumbs up, fingers crossed that you get a great score. Don't stress about it. What's up with all those crying faces, Babita? You should have smiley emojis and get really excited about it. Think positive, it starts now. All right, Babita, see those happy emojis. I'm happy to do this test because it's going to show that I've got good English and then I get to do the next step in my life which is university, going abroad for study and it's all a part of this super exciting, awesome process in life. All right, Babita? Every step in life is a part of the journey that makes it amazing. Students, keep that in mind, all right? It's the journey. I know it sounds cliche but the journey in life is what we must enjoy. Believe it or not, even though I've got a bit of a cough, a bit of a cold, I'm at the end of it, I enjoy it. I even enjoy that. I enjoy teaching and, and pushing forward. It's, you might think I'm weird. Probably do, <laughs> but I do. I enjoy every moment. It's amazing to be alive. All right, um, Amazon, yes, they've got our books. Uh, you can always search for that on Amazon. AE helps academic IELTS, G helps general IELTS. There's uh, two exam books for each. Okay, uh, 
And so we've got the listening right now. We're going. I'm going to play the audio for you in just a moment, and we'll get into some listening strategies. Uh, tomorrow, Feb 4th, um, we've got uh, speaking part two for members and speaking part three for everybody. Okay. Sajal is saying, I'm getting goosebumps because my exam is tomorrow. That's right, Sujal. You're getting excited. Good to hear. All right. It's what makes it fun. If we didn't have these exciting exams and other parts of life, it'd just be boring. All right. Uh, new video for you on our YouTube channel. Check that out when you get a chance. It's in the chat. I just copied it. It's this right here. It's a speaking video. Students, these first person perspective um, speaking videos, they're awesome for practicing and learning your English. So get going on that. Uh, IELTS listening, let's get to it. Um, IELTS listening, usually the first section of your sit down exam. In India, they were testing a new format, which was having the writing section um, before the listening section. I'm not sure if they're still doing that. It was kind of a test to see whether or not it was actually influencing marks, right? But if they end up with same types of statistics as before, then they probably won't change it. Okay. All right, but that's just India. They were just testing a couple of places. India was one of them, so not everywhere. Most places, your listening section is the very, very first section of the IELTS exam. I think it's good to have the listening section first because the listening section focuses on your English comprehension. Writing and speaking focuses on your communication. And arguably, it's more challenging to communicate than to comprehend, usually. Um, so it's good to start with listening. And listening is maybe easier than reading for comprehension. Maybe. If I design the IELTS exam, I might try to put the reading section first. All right. Um, so anyway, listening section usually comes first and you're sitting part, you go in, everybody's all nervous and you're sitting down. Don't be nervous. It's okay. It's just another day. Um, and um, and then they play the audio. You have no idea what's coming, so keep an open mind. The information can be anything, so don't uh, don't try to predict. Okay, uh, there's some silly people out there that try to say, okay, the listening section for March will be about bees, honey bees, and then everybody goes and reads books on bees, and then. In March, they have listening sections about um, volcanoes. And you're like, oh, that has nothing to do with bees. Um, so, yeah, no, don't try to predict that. Just keep an open mind. Keep your ears open um, and uh, pay attention to effective strategies. Okay. All right. First effective strategy, strategy one is look at the topic of all four listening uh, sections or listening parts they call them now all for listening parts um, while you have the instructions playing the instructions take about 90 seconds so look at all four parts we're going to do that right now okay so you want to get an idea of okay what is each part about um, and uh, that will give you a little bit of foreshadow and a little bit of added help when you get there okay um habib if you write all capital letters in the listening answer sheet in the paper-based exam it's totally okay to do that okay just remember that it's easier to make spelling mistakes and it's slower when you're using all capitals okay so up to you right all right so um, the uh, listening that we're looking at today, again, this is coming from, uh, well, they say part one now since 2020 uh, for the listening section. So they go listening part one. Uh, for us, this is coming from a CD1 track one on the website. Okay. And uh, we are going to listen to some audio and then we're going to answer the questions. Now you're going to notice that I'm going to jump to the other parts to check out the topics during the instruction time. So pay attention to those topics. 
And uh, as we play the audio, make sure to keep your answers to yourself in a separate document or piece of paper um, so everybody has a chance, okay? Don't, don't put the answers in the chat, please. That's not nice for everybody else who might have some different ideas. Um, so we'll share them after, okay? We'll share them after. So again, we're going to the website here. We're going to aehelp.com. This is the academic website here again to get all of the exams and materials click that big red button and then you'll have all of the materials for all these live classes um, if you're regularly here that's a really good idea you go to your my student account in your my student account you have the computer based IELTS exams you have a full online course that I was showing you some um, parts of last class for paraphrasing uh, you have all of the exam books printed. I'm using one of these exams today, um, of course, in dark blue, so you can see it better. And then the fifth tab here is IELTS audio CDs. And we're going to get into uh, listening test one, part one. So listen, answer, and follow strategy. Here we go. This recording is copyrighted by Two Think One Solutions Inc. and World ESL Tutors. You will hear several different recordings and you will answer questions on what you hear. There will be time given to read the instructions and questions and you will be given a chance to check your work. The recordings will be played only once. The test is made up of four sections. At the end of the test you will have 10 minutes to transfer your answers to the answer sheet. Now turn to section 1. Listening section 1. You will hear a conversation between two men as one of the men registers for a football league. First you have some time to look at questions 1 to 5. You will see that there is an example. This time only, the conversation relating to this question will be played. Hello there. I'd like to register for the Autumn Men's Football League. All right. Uh, in what town will you be playing? I'd like to play in Chester, but I'd be willing to travel to Liverpool if I had to. The man says he wants to play in Chester, so B has been indicated for you. Now we shall begin. You should answer the questions as you listen, because you will not hear the recording a second time. Listen carefully and answer questions one to five. Hello there. I'd like to register for the Autumn Men's Football League. All right. Uh, in what town will you be playing? I'd like to play in Chester, but I'd be willing to travel to Liverpool if I had to. Well, we have two spots left open on the team in Chester and five spots open on the team in Liverpool there's a very good chance you would have to try out for the team in Chester. Are you a good player? I consider myself a good player, yes. I have been to a number of the Autumn Men's League games in the past, just as a spectator, and I'm sure I would have no trouble fitting in. OK, good. So we will register you for Chester then. I just need to get some information from you, starting with your position. Where on the field do you prefer to play? I'm a midfielder, although really, I can play anywhere aside from goalkeeper. Oh, I forgot to ask your name. Right, I guess that's important. My name is Steve Tremell. Would you mind spelling Tremell for me? Certainly. Tremell is spelled T-R-A-M-M-E-L-L. -L. Right, now I need your home address, including your postcode. I live in Chester, of course, at 452 King George Avenue. The postcode is MS868P4. MS868P4? Yes, that's right. And your date of birth, sir? The 8th of September, 1986. OK. Now I need your phone number. Just a mobile number will do. I don't have a mobile phone right now, unfortunately. <coughs> I can give you my girlfriend's number instead. That would be all right, I suppose. Good. Her number is 329-63-3270. Fine. I think that's all the information I need to gather from you. 
Do you have any questions? Yes, I do have a couple. First, when does the season start? The season starts on the 28th of September, although your first game is later, I think. Let me check the schedule. Yes, your first game is October the 1st in Liverpool. Let me make a copy of the schedule for you. Thank you. Could you also tell me how long each game is? Each game has two halves, 40 minutes each half, so the game is 80 minutes long. That's a little shorter than the other leagues I've played in. Games are usually 90 minutes. Yes, our spring and summer leagues are 90 minute games, but our autumn league has only 80 minute games. I think it has something to do with the poor weather. You now have some time to look at questions 6 to 10. Now listen to the rest of the interview and answer questions 6 to 10. OK, can you tell me how many players are on each team? And I mean on the whole team, not just the players on the pitch. Usually there are five additional players to the 11 on the pitch. So there are 16 players on each roster. We generally find that to be the perfect number. It allows for a few players to miss a game, but still allows lots of playing time for each player. Yes. Playing time is what I was worried about. I don't want to pay my money and then sit on the sidelines the whole season. Are there minimum playing time requirements? Yes, each player must play a minimum of half a game, so you are guaranteed at least 40 minutes of playing time per game. Wonderful, that puts my mind at ease. Could you tell me what facility we play at in Chester? That information is on the schedule along with the addresses of all the other facilities in the league. Here's your schedule. Thank you. Oh good, it states we play two streets from my flat. How convenient. That is very lucky. Do you have any more questions? No, I think that's it. Oh wait, how much does it cost to register? Uh, it's going to be £125 for the season, including all fees. How would you like to pay? I'll be paying cash. Right. Would you like a receipt? Um, if you find that it doesn't work out time-wise, you can always bring the receipt back. That is the end of section one. You will now have half a minute to check your answers. All right, everybody, and use that half minute to check your answers. Uh, quickly look at the instructions for each question as well. A lot of times uh, students make mistakes because they don't pay attention to the instructions when they say, use one word only or two words. Uh, so pay attention to that. Pay attention to the spelling as well. Um, let's go through um, the strategy first that I showed you at the beginning. So remember at the start, I said you need to look at some of the information in each of the parts so that you can get an idea of what's going on right during that 90 second instruction time now keep in mind students that nowadays they don't have an example for part one um, if you're looking at tests that are 2020 or earlier they include an example at the beginning of the listening they do not include that example so that time is not available okay so here we saw that part one of course, as a man registering uh, for a football team or football league. Okay. Um, part two will be about the Titanic, right? As we saw. Uh, part three, what is that going to be about? So um, we looked at uh, some of the information there. Who remembers what the topic of part three is? Okay, Abos is saying it's ooze, 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 ooze. Abos, I think that's uh, like a go Uzbekistan. I don't think that's what part three is about. Um, <clears throat> Andrew Foxwell says it's a discussion related to history. Yes, Andrew, you're right. A group discussion uh, related to history. Yes, absolutely. And part four, um, what will that be about? All right. Mansur says cash the last question. I don't think it's about that. Harjot says it's going to be about climate change 
Yes, absolutely. Part four is really easy to get an idea of because um, the topic is often given as a title, like in this case, where it's like right at the start, they say climate change. So for instance, when you see that, okay, part four is going to be about climate change, right? And part one's, I don't want to say it's easy, but it's definitely much easier than part two, three, or four. So that's why you have to get your brain thinking about part two, three, or four at the very beginning when you're getting into part one. Um, like when you think about uh, part four and you think about climate change, um, what um, words or what ideas come to mind about climate change? So what are some English words that, um, that you can think of that are like, oh, that comes to mind? Okay. Uh, Rupa airplane, not sure how. Global warming, absolutely, Raquea, yeah. Sure. Uh, temperature, Yanni, absolutely. Yeah, the temperature of the planet. Uh, Raquea, carbon dioxide, very good. CO2, right? Uh, Gamer King says pollution. Yanni says greenhouse. Greenhouse. Uh, Yanni, it's not just greenhouse, it's greenhouse effect. Okay. A greenhouse is used to grow fruits and vegetables. Greenhouse effect is related to uh, global warming. Ozone layer, yes, sure. Mm -hmm. Noise pollution, I'm not sure how that's connected to climate change. I don't think noise pollution is connected to climate change so much. Um, water and food shortages, Habib, yeah, absolutely. Industrialization, yes. Yep. Waste, yes. Melting ice, very good, Tuan. Yes, so melting glaciers. Okay, so that's the idea uh, of looking forward in your listening is you start to think about these words that are going to be useful and they will help you to understand the, um, in this case, the lecture. Uh, better so definitely good okay all right so that's the idea behind it uh, get your brain moving on these ideas okay uh, students let's now answer these questions um, paying attention to keywords is okay uh, in the questions you definitely have to pay attention to the overall information so here they gave you the example where would the man like to play football in Chester again they do not have examples like this for your exams now okay uh, number one how many football matches has the man played in the league now here for multiple choice okay the first step is you need to think about it like an answer, like a statement. So I have played or I have never played. Okay. So what is the correct answer here? Is it 10, 0, 40, 50? Lamia says it's zero. Babita says it's zero. Raquea says it's zero. Yeah, and there you go. Look at all of you. What does the man actually say? Did anybody catch? What the man actually says that gives us this answer okay so uh, when you are practicing at home you should always always clearly know um, where the answer came from okay so here Yes, he says, I have not played. I've only been a spectator. Very good, Raquea. Yeah, he says, I have not played. I've been to a number of matches. But only as a spectator. Right? So that's what he actually says. He says, I've been to a number of 
uh, the matches, but only as a spectator, right? So students always know if you get an so if you get an answer correct when you're practicing at home, but you don't know why you got it correct, it was just a lucky guess, okay? Uh, and that's not going to help you get a good mark on the aisle. So always check and make sure. Uh, where should you look? Okay, if you're not sure about the answer, where should you look? At home, where should you look? You should look in the audio scripts. That's right, the transcripts. Um, all good materials will have the audio scripts for you. It's very important when you're practicing the listening section to have those audio scripts. For us, for this exam, it's page 155. There you go. So there are the scripts. Um, and you can see it here. So you can even see the instructions here. This recording is copyrighted by Two Think One Solutions Inc. and World ESL Tutors. Okay, and then here uh, is the example. Uh, Steve, hello there. I'd like to register for the Autumn Men's Football League. And then here um, we go. It says, um, okay, uh, for question number one. Steve says, I consider myself a good player, yes. I have been to a number of the Autumn Men's League games in the past, just as a spectator. Okay, good, so now I know that this is where the answer comes from. If I don't know what spectator means, I have to look it up, and then I learn that, oh, it means he's like a person watching the game um, from the seats, and then that's the spectator. All right, so that's why he's the answer is zero because he's gone to some matches but he's not played in matches he's just watched the matches okay all right um students uh what is another good way to use the transcripts so you can use the transcripts to check your listening answers and to understand why you have that answer and what is the english that's related to that answer um, what is another good application of <clears throat> the transcripts? Rockway says spelling, yeah, maybe. Miles says learning new words, understanding says hard jot. Not what I'm thinking. There's some other fun exercise that you can do uh, with um, with the transcripts. Okay, this is a good tip. For everybody especially for those of you who can access our premium IELTS package okay so um, effective practice uh, use listening section transcripts not only to check your listening answers but also to practice your speaking for the IELTS exam. So yeah, exactly, Carolina, reading and shadowing, um, practicing your speaking with partners. So um, one of you could be uh, Steve in this uh, dialogue, another one of you could be Joe in this dialogue, and you can use the website and go to the uh, student uh, partner speaking and say, hey, do you want to use some of the transcripts? By the way, it's nice to see people in here uh, to practice the speaking, and then they'll go, yeah, that's a great idea. So again, students, um, when you can, uh, use these big red buttons on the websites, join the premium package and use these materials for your learning, okay? So you can use it for student partner speaking, okay? All right, it's a simple and effective way to practice speaking. All right, let's go back to the uh, questions and then we'll go through some more of them. So here we go. Back to 47. All right, next question. Question number uh, two. 
What position does the man play? Now, again, I'm, it's multiple choice. So I'm listening for this statement where the man goes, I play or I'm, I am a. And the answer is B. Very good, Mansur. All right. Bogdan, I think that was Greek or something. Um, Rahim John says A. Uh, Munster says B. The correct answer, Munster, is A. Uh, the man says, I am, and again, if you look at the transcripts, you'll find this, Munster. He says, I am a midfielder. But I can really play any position. Aside from goalkeeper. So that means he cannot play goalkeeper. It's a very different position, right? It makes logical sense. Um, so midfielder. Midfielder could be a striker, but the best answer, and in the IELTS, you're always looking for the best answer. The best answer is midfield. Okay? All right? So midfield. He says, I can, I'm a midfielder, but I can really play any position aside from goalkeeper. Right? Something like that. It was pretty close. Okay. And then we have this fill in the form. Now, students, remember, in part one listening, you need to get as many of these correct as possible because it's going to be your easiest part of the listening by far, right? Part two, three, and four are definitely more challenging. So what is his name? He spells it. It's one way that uh, part one's easier is they <clears throat> give you a couple of, they give you the answer a couple of times. So. Harjad says it's Tramel, spelled T R A M M E L L. Yes. Tramel. Okay. So they spell it, they spell it twice. And the guy says it's Tramel, T R A M M E L L. Yep, Tramel. Okay. Uh, capital T, very important. It has to be right. All the letters have to be correct. You need the double M. You need the double L. It's the only way to pick up that point. Okay. So, Mansur, unfortunately, it's wrong. Um, make sure that you listen, Babita, Mansur, M, N, M, N. Notice how the M ends with this. Mm -hmm. M. N. It's a very different finish on the mouth. N. M. N. M. Okay. Uh, hear those differences between those similar sounding letters. Okay. It's important for your test. Address is 952 King George Avenue. Postal code. What is it? Yes. Mouth closes on the M. Absolutely, Iqbal. Um. Postal code MS868P4, very good. MS868P4. The man says MS868P4. He says, yeah, that's right. It is. Okay, birthday, 8th of September. Um, these kinds of information that's given, they help you to locate yourself in the audio. So do pay attention. Don't be like, oh, whatever that's given. I'm going to... Um, no, it helps you to identify where we are in the audio. So you see, oh, it's 8 September 1986. Okay, phone number 329-633270. Um, good. All right, number five, match the time with the event. It's another type of multiple choice. This is where you want to use that note paper. So for those students who are used, who are doing the computer-based IELTS practice exam, um, make sure you use the note paper for multiple choice questions. And um, as soon as you hear the answer, just write it down real quick. And then uh, at the end of the section, that's when you should pick the right answers. Okay, everybody get that? That was an important piece of advice, all right? Um, number five, match the time with the event. So I just took these notes here. I said, okay, the, the season starts 28th of September, but then the first game is October 1st. So uh, choose the correct letter. Uh, Steve's first match. Okay, it's October 1st. That's what I did in my notes. So it's got to be D, 
right? So everybody who picked D, good job. All right, that's what it is. All right, everybody. And then um, we had this little table to complete. So here we had the topics. Really pay attention to those. The league, it's an autumn league. So the game length is 80 minutes. Why is it only 80? Why is it not 90? Okay. So here's a good kind of another practice for you. It's a little tip. Okay. So um, effective practice too. It's kind of group practice here. Uh, in groups or with partners, practice asking follow-up questions to the listening sections to see how well each person truly understands the discussion or presentation okay so for example here the question is why are autumn games only 80 minutes long Rakwe says, um, because it has something to do with the weather. Yeah, Rakwe, that's right. So the admin guy says, I think it has something to do with the bad weather. Yeah, very good. Okay. So, yeah, something to do with the bad weather. All right, number six. Um, how many players on the roster? Just one answer here. That's right, 16. There's 16 players. So, 16 players on the roster. Good. Um, minimum playing time. Now, this is where you really want to pay attention to the instructions that say two words. Okay, minimum playing time is 40 minutes. You have to have minutes. If you wrote only 40, 40 would be wrong, okay? So if you write just 40, um, 40 would be marked wrong. Uh, because uh, IELTS will say that, well, 40 what? 40 hours, 40 days. There's other measures of time that doesn't clarify for the, re, uh, for the audience, so you need minutes. So if you only put 40, then you get it wrong, okay? Keep that in mind. So Mansur, your first answer, 40, would be wrong, right? Be careful about that. Okay, um, number eight. Why does the man say he's lucky? And I think the man actually says, I'm fortunate, and it's the administrator that says, oh, that is lucky, okay? Um, and he says, oh, good. Uh, it's just two blocks, I think he says. From my house, right? So this is where if you're looking at the answers, you might run out of time or you might miss the next question because you're spending so much time on reading. So you have to make sure that you understand the answer and not just stare at the questions. Yes, Bogdan, you can. So Bogdan is asking, can we write um, wor or numbers if they're asking for words only? Yeah, so here, even though it says write no more than two words, you can write 40 minutes. So you don't have to write 40 minutes, okay? So you do not have to write 40 minutes. You can write 40 with a number. They should not mark you wrong for that, okay? All right, that was a good question, Bogdan. Yeah, it's fine. All right, um, number nine, write no more than two words for each answer. What is the cost of the football league? So how much does it cost? 
Harjot says it's 125 pounds. And not only can you use numbers, Bogdan, but you can also use symbols. So uh, using the word pounds is okay, but if you know the symbol, I recommend using the symbol. So you should um, use the symbol. So you should use the symbol like that and then not use that because this is the fastest and easiest answer. You should always use the fastest and easiest. Now, careful students, if you use the wrong symbol, so if you use the cash sign, they will mark that wrong because that's $125, not 125 pounds, okay? So be very, very careful with that. Iqbal, also in writing, yes. So in task one, task two, writing, whenever you can use the symbol, you should. Like um, I see essays in task one where people keep writing the word percent. And I'm like, uh, you mean like percent? Like that's just way faster and easier to use, right? So use the symbol, all right? Okay, just make sure it's the correct symbol, okay? Pounds, not dollars and if it's euros then use the euro uh, symbol not pounds okay all right how does the man pay for the registration fee credit card no he says i will be paying cash all right good um, now, uh, add up your answers. What did you get out of 10? In part one, your goal is nine or 10. That's your goal. So Harjot, if you got 10 out of 10, that's fantastic. Yanni, nine is good. Ryan, eight, good. Uh, Raquea, 10, fantastic. Andrew, 10, well done. Gamer King, nine. Mansoor says seven. Wong says eight. Okay, so nine or ten, ideally, perfect world. That's just because the next parts will get more and more difficult. So you want to keep as many points as you can in part one. Okay. All right. Um, circuit cast two. Ooh. Trouble. Lots of listening, lots of practice, okay? All right, everybody, so we know that uh, section two is going to be about the Titanic. Titanic was a big boat in history. Anybody know um, what year the Titanic sank? When did the Titanic sink? Anybody? Just for fun? No, let's do it on the... So, well some fun fact trivia so what year did the titanic sink 1912 very good yeah you were close andrew just before world war one right so 1912 all right why did it sink it's pretty famous i mean many people have read about it or saw a movie on it at some point um, so why did it sink? <laughs> Harjot says, last year when I watched the movie. <laughs> Very funny. Okay, it hit an ice mountain, which is an iceberg. Yes, it hit an iceberg. A large uh, floating uh, ice island. Yes. It's called an iceberg, okay? All right, um, here's, an, here's an interesting question. Where did it sink? Where did the Titanic sink? If you wanted to go and find it today, where would you have to, what country would you have to visit? Where did it sink? Atlantic Ocean, but where in the Atlantic Ocean? Where in the Atlantic Ocean? North Atlantic? Whose waters?
and very, very in a, on Earth. Yes, <laughs> Tran. It was definitely not on Mars where it sank. All right. Whose country's water was it in when it sank? Anybody know that? Ah, it was in Canada. Off the coast of Newfoundland. Right? So you'd be visiting my country if you wanted to go deep diving for um, the Titanic. Yes. We've got some pretty cold water here. All right. Okay. So um, let's do the listening. So it's good. So this, uh, you're like, why, why, why are we, you know, what are we doing? Well, this is preparing your brain for the listening. Okay. Um, one good tip. Okay. For uh, your practicing your listening. Okay. So it's another good exercise. This is a solo exercise. Okay. So when you are about to practice, your IELTS listening. If you see an unfamiliar topic, like for example, Titanic, don't just jump into it and be like, okay, I'm gonna listen. That's not bad to do in some cases because you might get a new topic that's unfamiliar in the IELTS, right? But for practice at home, sometimes, not all the time, like I say, sometimes it might just be good to jump in. But sometimes what you want to do is before you start to listen, instead of shocking yourself with the information, read about it first. So if you see an unfamiliar topic, for example, the Titanic, read a few pages about it first. On, for example, Wikipedia. Then listen. It's just going to be much more effective, okay? So this is for home practice, of course, right? So you see that, oh, okay, um, this next uh, topic is the Titanic. Um, I have no idea what that is. I've never heard about it. I never saw the movie. Uh, so I'm going to b watch the movie <laughs> and learn lots about the Titanic. Um, some false facts as well. But um, yeah, and then maybe you'll read a little bit on Wikipedia and then you listen and then you try. Okay, everybody got that? So that's kind of a way to make it more fun, uh, less shocking, um, more effective for learning vocabulary and for your thinking as well. Now, yes, yeah, certainly before the IELTS exam, do uh, try some without, you know, uh, looking up information because you might get a surprising topic, but for learning, it's an effective way. All right, make it make it more fun. Watch the movie, The Titanic. Okay, um, so students, uh, let's do this. Let's listen again, everybody. There were a couple of you that uh, did not pay attention last time in part one. Um, do not put your answers in the chat while we listen. Because if you're giving wrong answers, it's confusing for other people. And also, you should let other people try to answer as well, okay? So, uh, we will go through the answers together at the end, all right? We don't need any heroes. Just be yourself, answer the questions on a separate piece of paper or in a separate document, and then share it afterwards, okay? I know that Sarah had to delete some answers last time, which was good, by the way, Sarah. All right, so if you catch those, Carolina, just get rid of them. Get them out of there. Time them out. No, yeah, well, you can. Um, okay, so uh, here we go, everybody. We're jumping back to the website. Again, we're in the My Student account. We're in the audio CDs section here. Um, you get a lot of audio uh, CDs when you get the premium IELTS course. Uh, we're going to uh, CD2, or I mean, C, sorry, CD1 track 2, of course. Here we go, everybody. Now turn to section 2. Take some time to look at questions 11 to 16. Listening section 2. You will hear a radio presenter interviewing a woman about the infamous ship Titanic. First, you have some time to look at questions 11 to 16.
Now listen carefully to the interview and answer questions 11 to 16. Good afternoon to all our listeners and welcome back to History Now, a weekly program that reflects on subjects of historical influence. Today we are going to speak with Dr. Andrea Smithson, an historian at the University of Glasgow. Good afternoon, Andrea. Good afternoon, Peter. What are you going to talk about today, Andrea? I'll be talking about one of the most catastrophic events in maritime history, the sinking of the Titanic. I can't wait for you to begin. Thanks, Peter. The Titanic was an enormous ship. The makers called it unsinkable. From end to end, it measured approximately the length of three football pitches. It had the capacity to carry over 3,500 passengers, as well as the over 800 people on the crew of the ship. Despite its massive size and impressive capacity, the Titanic was able to cruise at a speed of 40 knots. This was in large part due to the 59,000 horsepower engine. Just how much is 59,000 HP? Well, in literal terms, it's like being pulled by 59,000 horses. More realistically, it's the equivalent power of 500 cars. On the maiden voyage that left Southampton, England, on the 10th of April 1912, there were 1,343 passengers and 885 crew members. There were three different classes of tickets for those aboard the Titanic. A third class ticket was the lowest level ticket. At the time, it cost between three and eight pounds. A second class ticket cost about 12 pounds. A first class ticket cost anywhere from 30 pounds all the way up to 870 pounds. In today's money, 870 pounds is over 20,000 pounds. You may be wondering what the people in the first class were paying for. They had luxurious rooms on the highest decks, delicious meals for breakfast, lunch and dinner, as well as the finest entertainment money could buy. On the other hand, those in third class slept in cramped rooms which were quite plain and small and did not have access to the fine restaurants and entertainment on the upper decks of the ship. Now I'd like to tell you about a few lesser known facts about the Titanic. Although there were four large funnels, or smokestacks, on the Titanic, only three of them were functional. One of the funnels was put there just to make the ship look even bigger and more impressive. The ship carried over 70 tonnes of food for the passengers, including over 40,000 eggs. You now have some time to look at questions 17 to 20. Now listen to the rest of the interview and answer questions 17 to 20. On the night of the 14th of April 1912, on her maiden voyage, the Titanic hit an iceberg. About three hours later, early morning the next day, the ship sank. The reasons for the sinking are numerous. First, the watertight doors, which were supposed to keep water out, didn't work properly. Second, the night of the 14th of April was incredibly calm on the water. Icebergs are easily spotted when there are waves crashing against them. On this night, there were no waves. The strength of the metal in the Titanic was not as it should have been. The metal became brittle in the freezing cold and was easily broken by the iceberg. Another big factor was the inability of the Titanic to turn quickly. Once the lookouts had spotted the iceberg, the captain ordered the ship turned, but it was too late. If the ship had been able to turn faster, it would have missed the iceberg. One of the biggest tragedies about the sinking was that there were not enough lifeboats for everyone on the ship. In addition to this, many of the lifeboats left the sinking vessel with less than half of the people they were designed to carry. For example, the first lifeboat off the Titanic left with only 27 of the allotted 65 passengers. This unfortunate occurrence can be attributed to panic on the part of the passengers and crew. One can only imagine the sheer terror on board the ship that early morning. 1,523 out of the 2,228 passengers and crew perished that morning. Most died from the near freezing temperature of the Atlantic Ocean. 
Others drowned after being trapped in the lower decks. 705 people lived to tell their story, most of them women and children who were put on the lifeboats before the grown men were. Because of this, 94% of the first class passenger women and children were saved, while only 14% of the third class passenger men survived. Overall, 60% of the first class occupants survived, while only 25% of the third class ticket holders lived in the aftermath of this tragedy. That is the end of section two. You will now have half a minute to check your answers. All right, students, and again, use that half minute to check your answers. Let's go through the answers together now. So a lot of multiple choice. Again, multiple choice, you really have to listen for the answers. They're sometimes very put together, like number 11 here. So number 11 says, what was the overall capacity? Overall capacity means the total capacity, right? And so the correct answer here, according to Conwall, is C. And Andrew agrees um, because it's 800 plus 3,500, which is 4,300. So you have to do a little bit of math here. So it says there are 3,500 passengers and 800 crew members maximum, which means that the answer is actually A and B together, which is equal to C. Okay, so the correct answer is C. 4,300 because overall capacity. IELTS is a thinking exam, students. If you're hoping to just get answers correct by catching keywords, you're going to be in trouble. You might get a six or maybe a 6.5, but if you want to get into those higher band scores like seven, five, especially eight to nine, you have to go beyond just trying to catch keywords, okay? Um, <clears throat> so, Andrew says you don't need to calculate. It's obvious that the capacity was over 3,500. So C is the only viable choice. Absolutely, that's true, Andrew. So you don't even have to do the math. So from listening, you can just figure out that it has to be C, right? So the speaker says um, it had an overall capacity to carry 3,500 passengers and 800 crew members. So the total must be the number that's the highest or higher than 35. The only time you'd have to calculate, Andrew, is if you'd had another number like 4,100, right, as option D, then you'd have to be careful. And that's kind of how it is for um, part three or part four, where it'll get even one step trickier, okay? All right, so pay attention to that. <clears throat> number 12, what was the cost of a third class ticket? Um, a, between 30 and 870 pounds, uh, B, one to two pounds, three, or C, three to eight pounds. Again, the answer was C. Uh, so here, the only two possible choices were B and C. A is way too expensive for the time. Um, so yeah, you had to kind of catch that one. They said three to eight pounds. Okay, now when you have these multi, multiple choice questions like number 13 to 15, okay, um, it's very important that you take notes for the answers just like I did, I took these notes, okay. The question was what were the three benefits of a first class ticket? And they had nice rooms, delicious meals and entertainment. So I'm looking for those, okay. Uh, luxurious rooms, great entertainment. High quality meals. B, C, D. Anybody, everybody who got B, C, D, you're good. Okay, those three. Any two, if you got two, you get two points. If you got one, you got one point. Okay. Here, simple diagram matching. Which of the following is the best representation of the Titanic? That basically means which is the closest to how the Titanic actually looked. Is it A, is it B, is it C? It's B. Yes, yeah, so they said, okay, the Titanic had four smokestacks, four big chimneys. Must have been pretty stinky on <laughs> board the Titanic with those four big chimneys. Um, so four big chimneys uh, and uh, yeah, uh, one chimney 
didn't actually work. It was just for show. Too bad they didn't use that for lifeboats instead. Now none of them work. All of them are at the bottom of the ocean and they make uh, homes for fishes. Okay, or for fish, I should say, right? No plural of fishes. Fish, fish, fish. Okay, um, students, uh, the flow chart. Flow charts, you really want to pay attention to the flow. And um, notice how 18 actually kind of came before 17. They repeated 18 again after. But um, you really have to pay attention. Sometimes it doesn't seem to quite come in the order of the audio okay so here you had to put in some words um, extremely calm night so there were no something crashing against the iceberg well what can crash against the iceberg our jot says waves yes not boats but waves the only boat crashing against the iceberg was the titanic right so waves um, so it's really calm. You have to visualize this. So you're picturing this. You know, you've got this boat. It's a very calm night. It's moving along. It's dark. And there's no waves hitting this iceberg. So it can't be seen. There's no like splash, right? So the Titanic hits the iceberg. And the hull of the ship breaks open and the watertight something failed. The watertight what failed? That's right, doors. You don't need capitals here. These are common nouns, students. So watertight doors failed. Right. Um, if you know the word watertight or if you know the collocation watertight, it means that it doesn't let water through. So it's um, water resistant, right? But in this case, the correct words are watertight or waterproof, I guess is better for watertight, waterproof. Okay, uh, many something left the ship half full. Uh, so this has to be a noun, okay? Left, leave, left. So it has to be a noun here. It's a tricky one, everybody. It's one word. And many means it's plural. So it has to be one word. It has to be plural. Lifeboats. Tricky one. Okay. 1,523 people die. It's extremely tragic. Most from the freezing cold temperatures of the... Well, and if you're in our task to... Um, writing class this would be a good example of uh, time is more important than money because uh, a lot of these people were not certain of this event happening Atlantic Ocean yes is the name of an ocean so it has to be capital A capital O okay Atlantic Ocean Make sure that you know when to capitalize. You know, sometimes um, students are like, can I use all capital letters in the listening? Yes, you can. You can use all capitals. Uh, in the paper-based exam, only do that when you're transferring your answers to the answer sheet. In the computer-based exam, you can just hit caps lock, okay? But um, it's a good idea to learn when to capitalize uh, when you're writing in English because task one, task two, you can't just use all capitals, okay? It, Ryan, if you have a space between life boats, you probably will get it marked wrong. If the answer sheet for the examiner says life boats is one word and you have it as two words, it's not the right way. Yeah. So many life boats left the ship half full. Yes. Okay. All right, um, so how did you do everybody? What did you get from 20? Uh, students on the websites at the very bottom okay you have a score calculator you can uh, put your score in when you finish all of the sections like you can put in 34 you can get a band 7.5 uh, 
Uh, you see that behind my head there, 7.5 right up there. So use the score calculator, okay, on the website to figure out your raw score to your band score, all right? After you finish the full listening, we'll do the rest of the listening next week. Uh, 17 out of 20, Yanni, is very good. Gamer King, 17 out of 20 is good. Uh, Tran, 15 is so-so. You want to try to get at least 16 for part one, part two together, okay? That should be your goal, okay? So your goal, keep this in mind, everybody, uh, for a band uh, 6.5 or higher, your goal should be to get uh, at least 16 from 20 on your practice exams in part one and two. Combined. And the reason I say that is because part three, part four are even more challenging. So that's where often people tend to lose the most scores, okay? So be careful with that. Thank you so much, Sarah and Carolina, for helping out um, in this class and giving students some valuable information and answers. I'm back tomorrow, everybody. And now that while well, all of you in the chat are subscribers, you should get notifications. So definitely when you subscribe, do hit the notification, the bell, so that uh, YouTube can tell you that, okay, this guy's got a another live class or a new video coming. Um, check out the websites, everybody, aehelp.com for academic IELTS, uh, gieltshelp.com for general IELTS. Uh, again, those are the websites with all of these practice exams. They're the websites that you know power our courses that we produce. And that's where all of our full version videos go with no ads. So check that out. Um, I'm going to rest my voice, get it all nice and strong for tomorrow for your speaking classes, and we will use the websites to interact with our students and practice our speaking. So have an awesome um, continuation to your weekend, everybody. Uh, hopefully you all have some fun plans. Go out, get some fresh air, get some exercise, meet up with friends, socialize, enjoy every moment, and I hope to enjoy some of that time with you tomorrow. Uh, at the same time and a little bit earlier for speaking part two for members. I'm Adrian. I'm signing out from Victoria, but I'll be back within 24 hours. Bye for now, everybody.